Okay. How's everybody doing tonight? It's Y here with another Stellar stream. I know it's been a bit since I did one. And I feel kind of bad for that because I do, I do enjoy this game and I do like playing it. And it's a lot of fun to stream. Or at least I think so. Um, whether or not I make the stream fun is an entirely different story. <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll leave that up for debate. Okay, so today... I'm actually going to do something different from uh, from normal, and I'm going to talk about the game, uh, certain things like strategies, game mechanics, kind of, sort of, stuff like that. Uh, I'm doing this completely unscripted, uh, so first off, it's completely unscripted. If I wind up rambling on about a specific topic for a long time, that's not a big deal because I'm still going to try to stream for about two hours here and just, you know, maybe cover a few different topics. Um, secondly, I am by no means a Stellaris expert. Uh, I've simply been playing console since it came out in February of 2019. And a lot of stuff that I have discovered and a lot of stuff that I will likely say throughout this stream is of my own opinion. However, I have spent quite a bit of time doing research on certain things, uh, various different game mechanics. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos from very experienced Stellaris players like Acebeck or Stefan Anon, and there's several others that I've come across. Those two uh, come to mind most of all. Uh, they have some really useful and informative videos on YouTube, as well as several others that I've come across and that I myself watch. The problem is that those people all play PC version and they've been playing PC version for a few years, which is great. So they're very experienced. They have a wealth of knowledge and they know all sorts of helpful stuff. But as I said, they're playing on the PC version. So a lot of their videos, especially ones that have been put out in the last, well, in 2019, I should say, are for like version 2.2 of Star Stellaris, for example. And in order to find something for a more current version that has more parity towards the console edition, you have to go back and find videos anywhere between uh, about a year, uh, and that's been posted anywhere between a year or two ago on any of those channels, and it's tough to find. Although I have come across some, I did some digging. It was a bit of a pain in the ass, but I did, uh, but I did so anyways. Um, so, yeah, what the heck else was I going to say before I started? I can't remember. Like I said, this is unscripted, so I'll probably forget some things that I, want, that I wanted to say. Um, now, one thing that I do want to point out is that in several instances when, um... How do I word this? This is, this is difficult to say. I guess I should just flat out say, you know, it's possible that I might say something that is entirely wrong. Um, which, I'll be totally honest, I hate doing. Uh, sometimes I do it, and then when I go back and rewatch my own video or something like that, I come across something and I offered something that was completely incorrect, and I go, man, I screwed that up. Uh, either because... Uh, the wording in my head just came out wrong or because I had a wrong piece of information uh, or what or whatever. Uh, if there's one thing I really hate, it's misinformation. So if I flat out say something that is incorrect, don't be afraid to correct me in the comments. Uh, I never take it personally unless, you know, the comment says you're a fucking idiot. It doesn't work like that or some shit like that. <laughs> in which In which case, you know. Uh, that doesn't really bother me too much either because I probably said the same thing. Um, anyways, so I'm, I had a semi-structure for how I wanted to go through this. The first thing that I want to go over is um, suggestions for how you want to go about creating your empire. Now, this the thing about creating your own empire, or should I say creating your own species, is that there's a lot of factors to consider. Um... 
beyond just the visual flavor stuff, like for example, appearance, species name, name lists, and and uh, the name of your ruler, and uh, the appearance of your homes of your cities, and you know what kind of home world they're on, and all that jazz. Um, uh, and even like the ship appearance, for example, as well as the the emblem and stuff like that. Things like your government, your government, your ethics, and your civics, as well as um, your starting weapons and the traits of your species and whatnot. Uh, they have a significant impact on how you're going to play with your empire. And I have been asked. Uh, a couple times myself and I've seen a lot of comments on other people's YouTube videos for like the PC version for example where people just go I have no idea what to pick when creating an empire um, so you know they'll go and watch something about uh, you know what are what are like the best and worst civic uh, civic picks to choose for your empire or what are what are the best and worst traits to uh, to pick for your species stuff like that so a lot of people find that kind of stuff helpful um, because the PC version is so much further ahead than we are, like I said, they're in version 2.2, we're only in version 1.7. Uh, there's a lot more civic picks uh, for them, there's also quite a lot more traits. Uh, there's also very different traits, or some certain traits and civics uh, behave differently overall. Oh, uh, by the way, before I continue much further, uh, I plan to upload this on YouTube. It's very likely that I'll break it up into segments, into different little parts. So it's like, you know, if I cover several topics in this stream, uh, when I upload this to YouTube, it'll be like, okay, I'll just do this little segment, upload that. Maybe it's only a 30 or 60 minute video. And then another little segment where I cover a different topic, that'll be a different video. Um, so if you're, if, like I said, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more of this kind of stuff. If you'd like to see the me stream more of this stuff as well, uh, or if you just find this kind of video helpful. Um, anyway, so uh, let's let's go back to, as I said, empire building. Uh, the big things that I would say you want to worry about uh, is what are your uh, what are your species traits going to be, and what are your civic picks uh, going to be? Because I feel that those two things mesh together. Uh, sorry, mesh together better than anything else. You can, um, uh, how do I word this? Um, they interact with each other much better than any, all the other stuff in all of these screens for creating a new empire. Uh, because you because you flat out have certain civics and certain uh, species traits that do the exact same thing. For example, uh, the species trait industrious, which... Uh, grants 15% more mineral generation. So every one point uh, of mineral generation on a tile, your um, if you have a pop of this species on that tile, uh, it will generate an uh, it will generate 1.15 instead of just a flat one. So for every uh, what how many would that be? About eight points of mineral generation, I think. Um, then you're th then if you have a pop of this species on it, it'll actually give you a ninth point of mineral generation, and so on and so forth. So it can actually increase your mineral generation by quite a bit there. So you can combine industrious with with a civic pick like mining guilds, which increases your minerals production throughout your entire empire, no matter which species is on a tile for generating minerals. It'll increase that by ten percent. So with mining guilds for your civic and then you have the trait of industrious that's a total 25 percent bonus these things actually do stack together and if you want to go even further you could take something like strong which increases it by another five percent or even very strong which increases it by another ten percent so now you have with your native species third uh, uh 25 percent additional mineral production and throughout your entire empire you have an additional 10 percent so your native species essentially gets 35 percent extra mineral generation so every tile that produces three minerals three points of minerals so that could simply be a, a tile with just a, a grade one mining network on it um which would normally gen which um either a grade one mining network or even a basic mine or something like that. 
Um, if it only would normally generate three minerals for you, you put one of your native pops on it with these with these bonuses from your traits, and then the and then uh, this other bonus from your civic. You're actually generating four minerals, or you're generating more than that actually, uh, because it will go to an exact decimal value of two de decimal places. Uh, so you would be actually generating uh, 4.05. Uh, provided there's no other modifiers in place, like depending, like uh, you have another bonus modifier from the ruler that is in in office ruling your empire right now, which could give you another bonus to mineral generation, so on and so forth. But just just in this screen, you can give yourself a pretty big bonus to mineral generation just with these with these picks, with your civics and with your uh, particular with your particular traits that you have and you could you could go even further say you don't want to use the very strong um trait on your on your on your starting species because it's a very costly trait to to choose so you know i wouldn't blame you for it but you all you also do something else uh like for example oh where the heck did it go i think i passed it just now uh, just a sec here uh did, 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 not those it would be yeah, I passed it. Uh, it's conservationist. Um, so on top of the 20% bonus minerals generated from your native species and another 10% generated throughout your empire for the mining guild civic pick, uh, you also reduce uh, your consumer goods costs. So the cost of maintaining your pops with minerals um, is reduced by 20%. So you can further increase the generation of your of your minerals on it. Well, not really increase the mineral generation, but you reduce uh, the you reduce the the loss of minerals from having a very wide empire and whatnot. Um, so that's that's another thing that you could combine together to do that. And there's there's other stuff to that you could do as well. My personal favorite is I like uh, focusing on improving in the sciences really quickly. So you've got you've got these three picks: natural sociologists, physicists, and engineers. Uh, which any one of these increases their respective science output by fifteen percent if you have uh, a a tile with say a um, science lab on it any kind of science lab uh, you put one of these uh, you put a pop of your native species with one of these on it it'll increase that by a decent amount fit another 15 percent I like combining natural en engineers with intelligent because intelligent is a nice trait to have because it, in it increases all your science output from all three fields by 10 percent whenever you have a pop on a tile um, for science generation you know like a frontier clinic or even a xeno zoo or like i said any of the science labs um things like that so these do again these do stack together you've got your natural engineers for example and you've got your intelligence so just the traits from your species are generating 25 percent more science on that tile and of course there's a bunch of other in-game stuff that you can do to further boost this on an entire planet you could have a science ship um, assist with research for the whole planet you could use the spirit of science edict on that planet you could also use the empire wide edicts for example encourage free thought which encourages which increases all research by an additional five percent across your entire empire for example so on and so forth and then you combine that with another pick here in your civic picks uh, where is it um, here it is technocracy um, technocracy increases your research alternatives by one normally it's only three you can you only have three alternatives that pop up when you are picking a new research project for your scientists but technocracy increases that by one so if you're actually trying to rush to a specific type of science say you really want to want to rush to um i don't know let's just throw it a random thing um tachyon lances 
for your battleships and your military fleet. You want to rush to that, so you want to increase your odds of getting the necessary prerequisite technologies, which is upgrading your lasers. You have to get your lasers fully done from red, blue, um, UV, and gamma, and I forget what the I forget what the other one is. There's another one in there. Um, X-ray, X-ray lasers. Sorry. So from red, which is tier one lasers, to gamma, which is tier five lasers, you want to get get through all five of those as quickly as possible, so that you can start researching particle lances, and then upgrade to the tachyon lances as quickly as possible. Technocracy will greatly increase the odds of doing that by giving you an additional research alternative. So that combined with the bonus research that you are getting from your trait picks, whatever they are. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't do natural engineers if you're trying to research um, tachyon lances because it's physics research. Um, so the additional research al alternatives plus the bonus research that is generated from your native species can really help with that. And you can actually get pretty far ahead in technology compared to, uh, compared to AI, especially in the mid game uh, of of your game say about a hundred years in in particular you could get a pretty significant lead on them in how much stuff you've completed and researched and whatnot and uh, depending on which ones you pick you could even get ahead of them overall to the point where you could just completely slaughter them because you know you already have battleships and they don't you know for example it's fairly unlikely that that would happen but you never know it very well could um so uh, the last little bit is essentially, you know, which starting weapon do you go with uh, in picking an empire to give yourself uh, the biggest edge possible or to give, you, to give yourself the, the biggest advantage possible. Uh, so basically to summarize, before we move on to starting weapons, uh, essentially what you want to do with your civic with your civic picks and your traits, your species traits, just use stuff that combines together uh, that really synergizes very well. For example, the thrifty trait, and then you go to your civic picks, and you can pick, uh, where is it? There is one that increases your energy credit generation, if I recall correctly, does it not? Uh, where is it? Imperial call, no, no, no. I totally forget what it is. Uh, pop happiness, no, definitely not that. Um, there it is, Corporate Dominion. So you have to be no, non-xenophobic with your ethics, and you have to have an oligarchic authority. So in order to actually be able to use the Corporate Dominion uh, Civic, you would have to have an oligarchy, and you would have to be um, not, not xenophobic. So you can't, you could not pick either xenophobe or fanatic xenophobe for your for your ethics, you could pick it. You could pick entirely stu different stuff. Say you're a fanatic materialist, sorry, f fanatic militarist, and you're partially authoritarian, but you still have an oligarchic um, authority. You can still pick corporate dominion, and there you go. Your entire em empire generates 10% additional energy credits, and your native species generates an additional 15%, so 25% additional credits overall. Um, so without really thinking about it, I actually kind of um, went into how ethics can uh, can have an impact on the kind of empire that you want to create. Um, bef uh, before we go on to um, your starting weapons, actually, I, I kind of missed something. Uh, something else that you could actually do, if you want to go for something like a really big initial fire rate bonus to your ships for example you could pick fanatic militarist which gives you bonus army damage uh, and fire rate of 20 percent each and then you could there is actually something else you can choose in your civic picks to increase the fire rate even further where the heck is it uh, i saw it but i didn't notice what it was called so forgive me i'll have to search through and find it again um, I think it was... Nope, that's not it. Uh, there it is. Distinguished Admiralty. There you go. Okay, so just with your civic picks and with your... Uh, an ethic of fanatic militarist, for example. There you go. 28% bonus to your fire rate uh, of all your weapons right off the bat. 
So that's actually a pretty big advantage in terms of space combat. And if you wanted to, you could take it further uh, because uh, you have a pretty decent bonus to your army damage with the Fanatic Militarist um, ethic pick. So you could go Warrior Culture, which increases your army damage another 20%, and then pick a trait such as Strong or Very Strong, because Strong increases army damage by plus 20%. And very strong increases it by plus 40 percent so let's say you stick with very strong so overall you actually have a bonus army damage of 80 percent right off the bat so er in the early game if you get super aggressive and you start invading other people's planets uh you could very well have you know somewhat less armies than them but you could it's very likely that you could still uh successfully invade and take over their planet you know uh, that could that could very well be a thing if you cho if you uh, elect to go that route. So, you know, there's there's a lot of things there's a lot of things to consider, and it takes time to figure out exactly what you want to do. And the biggest thing I would suggest is just you know kind of experiment and and first off see what you like before you really start getting into you know what's effective. And I'm going to cover that in a little bit. Uh, we'll actually go over good and bad traits and good and bad civic picks and stuff like that, as well as the advantages and disadvantages of certain um, certain authorities and th certain ethics even. Uh, we can go over that in a little bit. So uh, back to where I was, sorry. Got it. Totally forgot that tidbit there, went off on a semi-tangent that tied into the entire subject of, uh, you know, what you want to look for when creating your empire. Um, so you've got your three starting weapons. There's your projectile weapons, which are which are the grade one rail guns. Uh, I believe they're called Gauss cannons. Um, in uh, when, when you're researching them, if you don't start with them, uh, that's what they will appear in engineering research. Energy rep energy weapons. Uh, this makes all your ships start off with red lasers. Um, so if you like earlier if i if you were trying to rush to say tachyon lances for example uh you could have your ships already start with energy weapons then you can skip from red lasers and go straight to blue lasers it will simply save you a little bit of time by not having to bother with that research project and then there's missile weapons now the here's the thing though i did mention that like say if you were skipping towards tachyon lances or say you were skipping towards something like the giga cannon or kinetic artillery you could you know choose to start with projectile weapons and try to rush to those technologies but the general gist and consensus and rationale i should say is that missile weapons is actually the best one to start with because they have uh they have significant advantages over the other types of weapons in the really early parts of the game. Uh, number one, they have really good range. They have much better range than energy or projectile weapons, especially the, the early projectile weapons. And number two, they have they still have pretty dang solid damage output uh, over the other two options. So if you go to war with somebody who is using, for example, laser or projectile weapons, in the very early stages of game, say only 10 to 15 years in, where you all still are pretty much only fielding, you know, your your basic Corvettes that have almost no upgrades, it's very likely that you can still win a fight even with a comparatively weaker fleet that has lesser fleet power, or you just have less ships, for example. It's still possible. I wouldn't, me personally, I wouldn't recommend it because I always believe in overwhelming superiority, but that's just me. Um, and the reason for that is because your Corvettes with their missiles would start, would, sorry, would start shooting their initial missile barrage before the enemy ships even get range in range to shoot their projectile weapons at them. So it's very possible that that first barrage will take out a couple ships before they even get in range and bring their weapons to bear on you. Uh, it's possible you could get multiple volleys off before uh, their ships close in uh, close the distance and get in range with the other ships. And uh, a big reason why missile weapons are still pretty good in the early game is because they're largely uh, they're largely uncounterable. Uh, and by that I mean they're much more difficult to counter than the other two weapon types. 
in the early stages of the game because you need two things. First off, you need, at the very least, destroyers, so the next biggest ship after corvettes, and you need point defense, so you need two research plot projects completed in two completely different fields of research because point defense is in physics and destroyers is in engineering and until you get those destroyers with some point defenses up missiles are largely extremely effective in the early game energy weapons can be more easily countered by simply researching the grade one uh, shields which i believe is just simple deflectors and you start equipping deflectors on your on your basic corvettes and then projectile weapons uh they're they're not as easy to counter especially in the late game but in the early game they have bonus shield they have bonus shield damage uh so if you research some armor or you research some thrusters that increases the evasion of your corvettes even but let's just stick to what i was getting at if you increase the armor of your corvettes say you research the grade one or even grade two armor and start equipping that on your corvettes uh, the projectile weapons will actually have reduced effectiveness in that way missile weapons don't really suffer from that because they have um they have a slight damage bonus to shield still and they still ignore some armor um Whereas early energy weapons and early projectile weapons, like the small variants of them and the unupgraded ones, they they only do one or the other. The energy weapons, like I said, red lasers actually take a penalty to damage against shields, but have armor uh, armor negation. Projectile weapons have a bonus damage to shields, but have no armor negation. Um, for example, missile weapons have both. They have the longer range. They cannot be as easily countered. They to require more technologies. Uh, to be to be countered it's not as simple as you know research this new piece of defensive technology like shields or armor and then start equipping your corvettes with it no you have to research the next level of ship then you have to research the point defense then you have to start building those ships you don't just bring back your current fleets and upgrade them so uh, generally missile weapons uh, are largely what you want to pick to start with and uh, you know, keep keeping all this keeping all this stuff in mind. Um, like I said, this is kind of what you want to go for in order to build yourself or create yourself an empire that is that is effective. And and you know, you give yourself as many advantages as possible. There's no there's no one perfect way to uh, to do things. And there is always, of course, the option of either you know role playing or just trying crap out for the for the hell of having it fun. You know what I mean? Um, so it, is, it still falls down to, you know, do whatever the heck you want, really. Um, there is, there is such a thing as the naked red laser Corvettes. And, uh, I've actually seen some videos where people have won entire games just by building, um, their starting Corvettes that had energy weapons. They started off with energy weapons for their starting weapon, and all they did was build Corvettes that had no upgrades. They had no, uh, you know, they didn't upgrade to blue lasers. They didn't upgrade the, the combat computers or the thrusters. They didn't give them armor plating or deflectors or afterburners or any of that stuff. They were completely naked red laser Corvettes, and they still won the game <laughs> against other AI empires that have much that have superior technology, bigger ships, so on and so forth. Um, so I mean that's a thing if you want to give it a shot. So uh, let's go back to looking at the traits. We're gonna.